So in this picture, you can see that I have three trees, but you can tell that this one is closer, this one is further away, and this one is the farthest away. So the way that we uh, show that in art is the size, so scale. When I compare these two trees together, this one looks bigger, so it looks like it's closer. It also depends where it is on your picture plane. So this is my horizon line back here, which is the point where the sky and the ground meet. So we're going to say this is the furthest point that we can see. So this tree is a little bit closer to the horizon line. That makes it look like it's further away. Same thing with this tree. It's very close to the horizon line, so and it's much smaller in size, so it looks like it's even further away. If I were to take this little tree and place it right here in the same area as this big tree, it wouldn't look like it's far away because it's next to the big tree. It would just look like it's a tiny little stick. So scale, which is how you compare objects to each other, their size, um, and placement make a huge difference in making your image look like there's something close, middle, far, wherever you want it to be. Another example is here. So it's another landscape, and notice how we have a flower that's much bigger than the tree. But because the flower is further away from the horizon line, that shows us that it's actually closer to us. And that's why it's so big. The tree is smaller because it's farther away from us. Same thing with the mountains. The mountains are normally bigger than both of these things, but because it's in the distance, we draw it smaller. So we're going to now create our own landscape where we show something in the foreground, close to us, the middle ground, and then far away from us in the background. So you can follow along with what I do. Feel free to add your own things within the picture. Um, I'm going to do a flower up close, a tree in the middle, and mountains in the back. So for my flower, this is how I'm going to draw it. I'll draw it on this side so it's a little different than the other one. So I start with kind of a circle, but it's kind of a curve here, and then it curves a little more on this side. You can add your petals. I'm going to do the petals on this side a little smaller so it looks like it's at an angle. So this one is on the side so it can be kind of big, but the ones over here are going to be a little smaller like I said, so it looks like it's at an angle. Okay, and if you want to add more petals in between, make it a little bit fuller, you can. All right, so we're going to draw an imaginary line here from the bottom of the center, and then we know kind of where the stem needs to go. So the stem is going to go right here, and we can just make it go off the page. If you would like to draw a leaf, you can just do two little lines next to each other and they get skinnier and closer together as they come to a point. And now I'm going to add the curves of the edge of the leaf. I'm adding the veins of the leaf. And kind of point upwards and there's my flower. So my flower is nice and big. I'm going to draw a line just to separate the foreground from the middle ground. So this is going to be kind of like its own little hillside that this flower is living on. Okay, so you can do it straight across, you can kind of curve it down like I did in this one. Like it's more of a mound. That's up to you. All right, I'm now going to draw my tree. So for my tree, 
I'm just gonna keep it simple, but I'm drawing it smaller than my flower, but higher on the paper so that it looks like it's further away. Okay, so I started with the trunk. I'm kind of fanning it out. And then you can add the branches. So these are the big main branches. You can add a few more by just flaring out each one. And then you add a V. On this one, I might add two Vs. And this one, I might make it look a little different. You want all the branches to look a little different so they're not exactly the same. That makes it look more realistic. So I like to start below the branch and add the leaves. And to kind of fill in this part, in between the branches, you also want to draw and connect it. And then you just draw a couple squiggles to show where the branches are going into the leaves. And then just a few more bumps and squiggles to give the leaves some texture. You can kind of close off the roots by doing some sideways zigzag lines. Okay. So now we have the foreground and the middle ground. I'm going to draw the furthest horizon line, just very lightly straight across. Something like that. Okay. So now, way off in the distance, you could always add another tree out here, whatever you want. I'm just going to do my mountains. So I'm coming up. And again, like with the tree branches, I want each mountain to be a little different than the next. We don't want to just have a bunch of bumps that look the same. And you can make some behind, like they're being, they're further, even further into the distance. So it's good to overlap them so it looks like there's more of them. All right, so one more thing you can add if you want is a pathway. So kind of like I did in this picture, I have a pathway that looks like it starts really, it's a lot bigger because it's close to us here. It goes over the hill and then over this hill and then it gets smaller as it gets further away. So I'm gonna start in the distance and I'm just gonna draw a wavy line to here and stop around here. I'm gonna start back over here and go very close to the other line, but as I get closer to this part of the paper, I'm getting a little bigger. Okay, so this is a separate area from here, so we don't want to just draw it straight over because if it went um, up a hill, it might pop up in a different spot. So what you want to do is actually draw it like it's coming up from a different area. So it's kind of like it's going here, down the hill, we don't see it for a bit, and then it comes back and makes its way to the distance. Okay, so now I'm just going to outline this and then we can go over some coloring techniques. All right, everything is now outlined. I also went through and erased all the extra pencil marks that were left over. So now with coloring, we're gonna focus on using varying pressure. So that means we'll use light pressure and dark pressure to get different results with the same color. So for example, I have my 
green colored pencil. I'm going to first just go through and color the branches or the leaves very lightly. So that looks great. It's very flat, um, but it's in the lines and it's colored neatly and smoothly. But in order to make it look more realistic, we're going to use the same color and in all the areas we want it to be in shadow. So maybe under these, kind of by these branches, I'm going to press a little bit darker. So I'm just pressing harder with that same color and you can get a totally different result. Okay, so that right there already helps a lot. I'm also going to just add some darker uh, values around these little uh, bumps. They're supposed to represent the leaves. Okay, so that is just using one color. Another thing you can do is come in with a totally different color and layer it. So layering your colored pencils can also give your work a lot more uh, dimension so it doesn't look so flat. So I'm just doing a little bit of um, scumbling, so I'm kind of scribbling it on top. So I'm not covering it completely, but just adding a few yellow highlights. Okay, so another tip, when you're coloring a flat surface, let's say I'm using this green again, if I were to color straight up and down, and it was noticeable, um, the strokes, it's going to look more like this area is a wall. So if I want it to look like it's a flat plane, you want to color uh, horizontally. So I'm just gonna lightly, again, color. And this is going to be green too, so I'm going to go ahead and just go over it, and that'll be fine. Okay, so also notice I'm using my whole arm when I'm doing a big area like this. If I was doing a small area like this leaf, I'm going to focus on using my wrist to control the colored pencil. But because I'm doing a large area, it's a lot more efficient if I just very lightly hold it. and use my whole arm to create the background. Okay, so same thing here. So this grass technique where I talked about going horizontal is also important when you're doing the um, trail. So if I were to just kind of draw up and down like this, it's going to make this trail look like it's going straight up instead of flat to the ground. So what we want to do is I'm trying to keep this, um, my uh, pencil strokes parallel to each other. So for example, I'm not turning with the trail, I'm staying straight, like my horizon line. And I'm just filling it in at the same angle all the way. Okay. 
right, and I'm going to just make this area a little darker so it looks like it is having a shadow cast on it by this little hillside. So I'm starting by pressing kind of hard, and then I'm slowly releasing my pressure. I'm going lighter as I go so that it fades out and it trans transitions very smoothly. Okay, so same thing here. If you want something to look like it has curve to it, you want to color it in the direction. So if you want it to look flat, you're going to color straight. If you want it to look like it's curved, you have to color it curved. Alright, and you can layer the colors, like I said, that's always a nice way to make your drawing look more complete and finished. Alright, so for my tree here, I'm actually going to start by adding some dark values in the spots that I know I want there to be a shadow. Alright, and then I will smooth it out so that it goes lighter around here. So you can do the mountains whatever color you want, but if you've ever seen mountains in the distance um, that are really far away, a lot of times they have kind of a bluish or purple color to them. Okay, That's usually just because they're so far away that the sky is kind of giving the illusion that they have a little bit of the blue in them. It kind of mixes, it makes a purplish color. Okay, so I like to kind of color straight on one side to give it kind of a shadow look. And then I'll come back on the other side and go the other direction. Depends how you're doing it, but this is one technique for mountains. Alright, you can also come in with another color, so this is just a slightly darker purple, so maybe on the parts I can choose one side to make darker and one side lighter.
right, so everything is colored. So the last thing you would need to do is just sign your name. So sometimes I like to use the same color so that it doesn't stand out too much in the picture. It's just so that you have your initials. So I like to put just my initials in the corner. All right, you can do your initials, you can write your full name, you can write your name on the back, that is up to you. So when you're doing your landscape, just remember to add something close up in the foreground, middle ground, background. When you're coloring, make sure you use different um, amounts of pressure. So like I did in this tree here, I have the dark green by pressing hard and then I have the light green around it so it stands out. And also layering the color so that you get a more um, realistic looking picture. Alright, good luck. I look forward to seeing your beautiful landscapes.